Uh, moving on to the Kirax fighter. Righto. Uh, so Kirax fighters, we have been told, retains their three modification slots. Also, three mods have gone to the Titan Scepter. Mm. Um, because they want to kind of mirror the old fixes. But instead of having to have cards that say, you get more mods or you get less mods, mm. it's just hard burned into the app, which makes it a lot simpler, which is really, really cool. So the dial is very, very similar. Uh, the greens are still in the same spot. There's no three turns, but we do have talent rolls at speed two. No, nice. there's, there's a lot more talent rolls in this game. I think... Well, talent rolls is one of those things which I think would have appeared on more ships if FFG had invented them sooner. True. It's like one of those. It's like reinforce. Um, clearly, reinforce doesn't just belong on the other type gunship, but mm. that just because of the nature of how they evolve the game, yeah, it's just one of those things. The action bar is very similar, apart from the fact that it's got barrel roll now. Yay! Yeah. Nice. Well, often you'd put barrel roll on it if you if you really wanted to play with them. You'd put barrel roll on them for two points, but. Which is interesting. It'll be interesting to see whether there's any modifications that are unlocked through the bow roll, like auto mm. thrusters was unlocked through the boost. Uh, because previously on the Kirax fighter, if you wanted to put auto thrusters on it, you had to take uh, engine upgrades yeah. and auto thrusters. So this may potentially unlock some more modification possibilities. We don't know those details just yet, but just worth commenting on. It's a lot of we don't know, but come on, we're doing the best we can. Uh, we're doing fantastic, Leo, and just stay with it, man. It's I'm up with it. <laughs> Um, also, the uh, core stats of the ship remain the same apart from getting one more hull. Again, hull all round. We like hulls. Yeah. Talonbane Cobra has moved from PS9 to Initiative 5. So, a slight okay. knockback. Um, FFG have stated, look, if you're not a cannon good pilot, we're not going to give you Initiative 6. It's just a bit too problematic. Um, back when Talonbane Cobra was released, Scum had no PS9 pilots. It's true. None at all. Uh, that's why Dengar was such a huge deal the next wave after that. Mm. And I think this is good. We, we don't need... I've always liked Talonbane Cobra, and he's kept the same... He's, he's, he's functionally the same. While you defend at range 3 or perform an attack at range 1, roll one, extra, one additional die. Yeah, it's a cleaner uh, way of riding it. Uh, yep. We don't need to worry about bonuses or something like that because there are things that may negate bonus. Just roll one greater or fewer dice. I, I like that wording better. And that's been applied uh, across a lot of things that talk about primary attack and defense and that kind of stuff. Mm. I quite like that. And yes, I think if Talon Bay and Cobra is more appropriately costed, he could be effective. I certainly hope so, because Talonbane and Cobra, he's, he, he, it's a really good it's a good ability, and he, he's really fun to fly. Absolutely. Um, I talked about this way back. In fact, look, first video I ever put on the channel, I was talking about the Guns for Hire uh, box, and everyone was all hyped about Talonbane and Cobra, like, yes, we can give him three mods and, and boost and barrel roll and auto thrusters, to which I responded, but then he's just a bad Fen Rao. Yeah. Um, a more expensive, worse version of Fen Rao. So it's costing. Costing is a very big factor with Talonbane and Cobra, and I think that's going to affect, if he ever appears in the meta, that's going to be one of the main factors for that. All right, moving on to the Lancer class Pursuit Craft. I always hate saying that. Yeah. Uh, the Shadow Pult Hunter is Initiative 2. Uh, the action bar is the same. Yes. Literally right. the only thing with a turret that remains with the same action bar because it always had rotate arc. Yes. Uh, you know, it was always like the beta testing for yeah. the modern turrets, which I think is And it is works. Fantastic. It worked really yeah. well. And aside from a couple of this, like, nonsense stuff where if you're firing arcs in the same place as your forward firing arc and then it does this, that, and the other. Uh, yeah, which I think is fine. Um, it is worth noting on the core stats that the mobile arc no longer slings three dice because mm. they're able to differentiate... Uh, where different arcs fire, how many mm. dice and that kind of stuff. It means that they're able to do this. So now just the forward firing arc is always three dice, but if you only have a shot with the mobile firing arc, it's only two dice. Uh, also two agility like it was before. And again, tilting slightly more towards hull, uh, taking a shield off for a hull, eight hull and two shields. The dial's, the dial's exactly the same, so... It was always regarded at the time as one of the most amazing dials in the game. It still kind of is. Um, all those three greens, it's it's part of the character of the ship, mm. and it's it's costed appropriately, so I think that's fine. And we also did have the reveal of Asajj Ventress, which was pretty much the only relevant pilot in first edition, mm. and she has had a slight nerf. She comes with two force that replenish, one of the few scum pilots that have force. At the start of the engagement phase, you may choose one enemy ship in your mobile firing arc at range 0 to 2, so can be touching, mm -hmm. and spend a force. If you do, that ship gains a stress unless it removes a green token. And this is a big thing. Uh, mm -hmm. The ability to remove green tokens are kind of a way to negate abilities in the first edition of the game that were repeatable and oppressive. 
Uh, Asajj Ventress, we all know, is a very powerful ability. Mm. Um, and I think this is fine. Uh, she has two force. You spend one force to give this stress token or remove a green token. Mm-hmm. And then the next turn, she bumps back up to two. Why does she have two? She has two because force tokens can be used just like calculate tokens. Um, so basically, uh, force tokens, again, can be spent to uh, change one focus result and can be spent multiple times a turn. So you could choose not to use her ability and just bank all those force tokens. And now very, you very, know. That's it. So <laughs> very good during combat, um, as force users should be. Yeah. I mean, uh, picture that moment in A New Hope where Vader was trying to hit Luke. I mean, like, the force is strong with this one. That's meant to represent, hey, I can't hit this guy. He has force tokens. All right, onto the Kimagilla fighter. The cartel executioner is our base level ship with initiative three. Has the baked in ability dead to rights? And I like this. Mm. Because um, when all this stuff was originally revealed, I had a few comments saying, oh, now that everything has bullseye arcs, the Kimagillas aren't special anymore. Not so true, because the mm. baked in ability gives you the same bonus that the bullseye arc used to have in first edition. All the other ships don't get that. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the ships need certain cards that interact with the bullseye arc to give it any relevancy at all. But if your opponent's inside your bullseye firing arc when they're defending, they cannot use green tokens. Calculate, evade, and focus. They can use force. It is worth saying that. Nothing gets around force tokens. That's a big deal in this There's game. There's purple. Okay. See, that, that's really good. I've always, um, I'm really glad they actually added this bullseye firing arc to every ship. I think it was a very, very uh, well-designed addition to it and being able to say all right that this missile works or anything that this works only in the bullseye firing range yeah which means that you know you're going to spend a lot more time and a lot more thought in positioning and positioning becomes very important yeah i always love the design with the bullseye firing arc. Yeah. i thought yeah this is rewarding good flying the action bar has got a slight downgrade the bow roll has turned red damn Fair enough. What was this? Bullseye firing arc the ship. Yeah. Uh, it's a very important action on that ship. That's probably fair enough. Still has, still has reload, still has uh, focus, still has target lock. Um, and the stats, it's got one more hole. It's got one more hole. Again. So it's just better now. More hole for everyone. I likes it. And the dial has had a slight upgrade in the two hards are no longer red. Apart mm. from that, all the same. Moving on to the M3A interceptor, the Skick. Uh, this has had the heavy skick title burned into it. They're yes. no longer doing light skick. Uh, which they said, because it went down to 12 points, and that was the same with the Z95s, we don't need two ships in the same faction that are both 12 mm. points. I just found it disappointing that the skick didn't get the versatility it once had. I, I guess, functionally, it didn't want the versatility. Everyone just took the heavy skick. Um, once it added one hull, that became very significant. Mm. So the weapon hard point is the same as the old heavy skick title. It adds the cannon torpedo all missile slot you only take one of them and none of the others and that extra hull has been burnt into the stats the action bar remains the same the stat line remains the same with that hull added in that you'd get from heavy skick the blues have become slightly worse than they used to the two banks used to be green and there's also no light skick title which means you can't make the three banks green or blue in this case either Mm. Uh, 3k turn and 5k turn like it used to apart from that all the same okay moving on to the fang fighter now called the fang fighter properly excellent uh, people used to get angry at me for calling it the fang fighter but now I well, am what vindicated they, what was it called the protectorate starfighter fang it, fighter's better no card upgrade or pilot referred to the fang fighter one little bit Whoa. maybe oh. some flavour text but that's it so we have the Zealot Recruit at Initiative 1. Uh, the action bar remains the same, except off the back of your barrel roll or boost, you can do a red focus. Which is fine, which is great. It's, it's just a, it's a pretty basic thing for a, the Fang Fighter to do. I mean, yeah. if, if you flew Fen, that's what you'd be doing anyway, so... Yeah, absolutely. You can't do double repositioning, which is fine. Yeah. Um, there seems I, to be a lot less of that. Yeah, which is good. Um, only the A-Wings and Interceptors can do that, as far as we know right now. Well, that's good. And I think for the Fang Fighter, it makes a lot of sense. It's an aggressive ship. It wants mm. to get close and focus to, you know, cross its fingers and mm. not die, hopefully. Uh, the and the title's been built in. The title's been built in, and it's actually better because your, def- your attacker no longer needs to be inside of your arc. You only need to be inside the attacker's fire arc at range <sighs> one. I like that a lot. It basically means it's harder to dive on this ship. Um, you can't arc dodge and negate the title anymore. I like it. I like it a lot. I absolutely I like this a lot more now. Especially if it's going to continue to be an ace platform. I like that a lot. Uh, being defensive at range one, it's everything the ship wants to be about. Mm. Uh, the core stats have remained the same. And also the dial remains the same. No complaints. 
It's a good dial. It is a good dial. Uh, one pilot revealed in Joy Rekoff. We also had Fenrau revealed earlier. Um, if you want to see that video, just go to the bonus reveals from the first wave of reveals. Uh, initiative 4. While you perform an attack, you may spend one charge from an equipped torpedo upgrade. Mm-hmm. If you do, the defender rolls one fewer defense dice. Oh, that's cool. It's interesting. Um, I think this is going to be fantastic if there are cheap torpedoes with lots of charges on them. <laughs> well, either that or the... What was the advanced protons or whatever it is? Like the range one ones? Yeah, for sure. They cost so much and they, you can only get one shot, shot out of them. But wow. That's a good point. If you have multiple charges on a torpedo, you could fire the torpedo. It doesn't say primary. Mm. Spend another charge off that torpedo and just, wow, you could bank all in on it. <laughs> just be like, I, I get one shot at this. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking that. I was just thinking, oh, just take a cheap, cheap torpedo and just use it on your primary. Which you can do. If yeah. you can't get target locks on your opponent because they're arc dodging you he's only initiative 4 so he's not going to get those shots perfectly every time Uh, that's going to be good and I think the fact that it can work in conjunction with your torpedoes Mm. that's nice it's a bit of versatility there Hmm. feels good moving on to the quad jumper the quad jet transfer space tug I miss, I miss the old name. <laughs> yeah, Quad Jump was better. Has the old Space Tug tractor array burnt into it? Choose a ship in your firing arc at range one. That ship gains a tractor token or two if it's in your bullseye firing arc. See, there, there's that bullseye firing arc coming back. It's great. And it's good. It's relevant. It rewards good flying. Blah, blah, blah. We love it. So talk to me about the change of the tractor beams. Can you can you move medium ships? Yes. Can it's you move the, large ships? Yes. Oh, It yes. is the same as ionization. One token to move a small two to move a medium three to move a large now uh, oh this just got better and there's ease it's sort of slightly easy to get more tractor tokens on Uh, now with the tractor beam for example all of your hits and crits turn into tokens Mm -hmm. so you need to get a big hit on those big ships which you can do but you need to roll well essentially so the tractor array is good there's no way it could just move a large ship by itself that's fine it can still move medium ships on the rocks and I'm going to feel pretty happy about that Mm. The action bar has had a red evade added to it. That's good. Probably needed. Oh, yes. It was a bit squishy before. It blew up. The core stats are all the same. Two red dice, two green dice, and five hull. The dials had a bit of an upgrade. Uh, we have a few more reverse maneuvers in the game. So the original reverse maneuver ship must get better. Mm. It has a two reverse now instead of a one reverse. Still can't stop. Uh, nope, still can't stop, but that's fine. It's trying to back up and do the do 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 and track take you with it and use its space type tractor array. Uh, no word on whether there's any way to do that, even when you're stressed. I don't think FFG mm. want to put that in the game anymore. There's no more pattern analyzer, as far as we know. At least, what's interesting about this is the quad jumper is one of the few. In fact, no, this is the only thirty or a ship we're getting in these packs mm. because resistance and first order is coming down the line so is tech still going to be a thing I don't know I don't know I don't that's that's weird isn't it are they going to meld it in with something else as a modification or maybe the quad jump will just lose tech maybe you know it's an old ship it's you know it's still meant to be around yeah during the period of the galactic civil war that kind of stuff so it doesn't necessarily need tech per se but that's just another little interesting tidbit to have a think about um, apart from that, the dial is pretty much on par from where it was before. Its S loops are at two speed. Oh, and it also has one banks. It didn't used ah. to have one banks. Uh, yeah, the one straight and the one hards. That's so frustrating. Uh, have mm. you ever tried to fly this thing? No, never. Uh, that dial is a mess. <laughs> is it? It's great in situationally, but not having one banks hurts. Because you can't line up the space tug tractor away. Yeah. You want to go, I just want to go over here and, and space tug you. But it I, needed but I that, didn't it? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, the one banks. I'm mm. so happy to see that. But we no longer need crazy stuff like that omitted to make the dials unique. Because of all the color changes, because mm. of the two reverse, it still feels unique. We also had a pilot revealed in Uncle Plut with Initiative 2 at the start of the engagement phase. If there are one or more other ships at range zero, touching in other words, you and each of the other ships at range zero gain a tractor token. Uh... Good. That's pretty much his old ability, except he now gives it to himself as well. Which might not be too bad. It means you can, um, you basically can perform yourself a barrel roll. Yeah, because you're the one uh, assigning the token. You're the one that gets to choose where you move. That's not too bad at all. You can sort of break off base contact and get a shot in the right situation. Mm. Might line up a really good shot with your opponent. It might even arc dodge him. Um, That's true. So this is these are things to think about because this happens after everyone moves, which is. 
just lovely. Um, Put them on a rock, get yourself off a rock. Yeah, it's good fun. It's good fun. Uh, it still happens on your friendly ships, but again, that might be good for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, again, once again, you're the one controlling it. Next, we have the Skirt Bomber, Lock Revenant, at Initiative 2. Um, its action bar has been slightly downgraded. The barrel roll is now red. Oh, well. Probably fair enough. Yeah. Who cares? Uh, the stat line's pretty much the same. Or we've traded off one shield for hull, as always. Mm. And the dial's are very, very similar. It no longer has a five red straight. It's now four. Eh, probably fair enough. Yeah. I'm happy with that. And the greens or blues in this case have been moved back one speed. So now those banks have been moved back to one instead of two. Mm. That's all right. A slight downgrade in the dial. I don't think it's a huge deal for this ship. It's still going to be very versatile according to the devs. So I'm happy with that. Moving on to the Star Viper with the fix baked into the card, which I love to see. Oh, yeah. And the same action bar as the Protectorate Starfighter. It has the focus, target lock, barrel roll, boost, and you can do a red focus off the back of barrel roll or boost. So again, no double maneuvers, but that's fine. We don't care. We still have curvy barrel rolls. I'm happy with that. I'm still... I'm Yeah, curvy barrel rolls. Also, those take a lot of skill to use properly. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'll be the first one to put my hand up and say, I cannot do that. Uh, I, I love it. Um, I've faced against players who are way better at using it than me. It's very frustrating. <laughs> um, especially with things like a Sarge Ventress, who is now um, the benchmark for how turrets work. Mm. If your opponent has like a Thweak that has a much higher pilot skill and you're left with a Sarge Ventress, it's so frustrating. <laughs> you don't know where to point it. It's so, it's so good. And I think that's really the hallmark of what this ship's doing. It's a space superiority fighter. It needs some kind of toolbox ability. And it's also unique in the way it flies. It doesn't do the boost barrel roll, which is everyone knew, knew Exactly. And it's not a deceptor. It's no. not a protectorate star fighter or fang fighter. It's a star viper, and it's a star viper that we love to see. Dials had a slight upgrade. We now have the two banks at green as well. Still don't have three hards, but the signals live remains, and that makes me happy. Yeah. All good. We do have a couple of pilots revealed as well. Prince Caesar, Initiative 4, pretty much the equivalent of Pilot Skill 7 of old. While you defend after neutralized result steps, another friendly ship at range 0 to 1 and in the attack arc may mm. suffer one hit or crit damage. If it does, cancel one matching result. It's functionally what it always used to be, but it must be in the same arc as well. So it's mm. a slightly nerfed as well. It had... Wow. It was never good. <laughs> that's, that's a bit they rough. nerfed a terrible card. Great. It's like a lookout sir, except on a really bad ship. Yeah, I think it's just it's gonna have to have a point reduction to remain relevant. It's gonna have to. Like it's gonna be have to cost less than Guri because Pretty, Damn. Uh, it does cost less than Guri because ah! Guri is now a higher initiative than Prince Izor. Amazing. Guri is initiative five, which is kind of the equivalent of Pascal seven or eight, mm. which is a big deal on the Star Viper. Guri, I think now is one of the best scum aces because of I that. I would say so, yeah. Um, Guri yes. was always a very good scum ace, but that that movement up, she was like five or four yeah. before. It really felt like she wanted to be past skill seven or yeah, eight with that she ability. Did. Um, yeah, um, the focus to turn into calculates. Obviously, she's a droid. She looks like a girl, but she is actually a droid. Don't be mm. fooled, men. At the start of the engagement phase, if there is at least one enemy ship at range zero to one, you may gain one focus token, which is a that's, functional reprint. Yeah, that's really interesting. She can't take focus. Except for through her ability when she gets a focus. Well, I think it's meant to be like... Focus is meant to be like what actual life forms can do. Mm. And I guess she's meant to mimic that because she's Guri. Because she's so close to... I don't... That's yeah. that's bizarre. Yeah, I, I like that. I like the idea of um, getting barrel roll or boost to get into range one and then getting a calculate and a focus token. That's mm. going to be really good. Very good ace ability at a very good ace initiative. Oh, and it's still going to be great with um, the aggressor in as well. Apt oh yeah, the IG88A sharing and calculate tokens. Yeah, I think that list has. We've got to have a serious look at that list because yep. that's going to be a lot of fun. Moving on to the YV666 party bus. Love it. Love me the party bus. One of one of the first ships I fell in love with, and it was I don't know why. It's just it's a bus and it hits things, moves like a bus. We've added the white reinforcement to the action bar. Very good. good. Very, Very relevant. good. That's it's not red, need, it's yeah. white, yeah. And it really does feel like what the ship wants to be doing. I mm. mean, it's basically a huge ship. It's yeah. kind of that size. Reinforce is really where it's at. The stat line is the same. It has three inside the 180 degree arc, as Ethel mentioned by the semicircle shown here. Mm -hmm. uh, the one green dice. And instead of six hull, six shields, we have nine hull, three shields. Much more weighted towards hull. So again, we're waiting more towards crits. This can take a lot more crits. It always did. Yeah. It always took crits like a champ. It took its punishment. Pretty much, pretty much. Moving on to the dial, it is 
the same. I can't see anything different here. That's a shame. It would have been nice to have one of these ships that had like a reverse maneuver. Mm, we don't need it. We don't need it, Owen, because we have... Because <laughs> we have someone else. <laughs> we have Morala Uval. And this is bizarre. Okay, I, I've got to say, I really liked Morala's ability in version one, even though he was, wasn't really well costed, didn't have an AFPT. Mm. So I'm a bit sad to let go, but this is crazy. This is beautiful. Uh, initiative 4 comes with two charges. If you would flee, you may spend one charge. If you do, place yourself in reserves instead. Okay, so reserves is like off the board, but ready to go into battle. It's where you put your dock ships when they're ready to go. At the start of the next planning phase, place yourself within range 1 of the edge of the play area you fled from. So there is a hard cap. There's no recharge on this. You can only do it two times a game. But that's fantastic. That's all you need. That's fantastic, especially it's if he has so good. if he has talents. Mm. I think that's going to help. Um, it really hurt this pilot in version one that he didn't have an APT. Yeah. Um, initiative four, which is used to be PS six, so initiative four actually feels better. Yeah. Uh, I feel like PS six could easily be initiative three, so that's good. He's definitely on the higher end of the potential initiative he could have been. I think if he has a talent, this is going to be legit. Yeah. If he doesn't. We'll wait and see because talents are a bit hard to gauge at this I, stage. I really love this. Being able to like bring someone into a trap, like move, move them towards you, and then next can just leave. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're behind them. It's yeah. great. I'm, 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 I'm going to love this ship. Yeah, if we have elicits and we have like feedback arrays and we can bump and we can reposition and bump again and do yeah. a full stop and, and fly then just, off. And then and just come back whenever we want. And bump and zap an ion and all this... Just this it's dumb stuff. Happen. Yeah, it's it's very scum. Yes. <laughs> but we need to see what things can combo with this, but I'm very excited. Now, what's to interesting what about this be. is also is yep. that it this res- setting it as reserves, we've never had something that could fly off the board and not die. Yeah. So this I this don't think it's re- gonna come back <laughs> I think it's gonna be a one off. If if this becomes a really popular ship for that reason, I I reckon well the, now there's precedent, it could totally be a thing. Could be, could maybe be. Maybe not on a, maybe not like leaving and come back, but maybe like instead of, instead of your ship, maybe on turn three, maybe a pilot's ability might be show up in turn three. Ah, oh, like reinforcements, yes. Yeah. And that feels like an ability that would suit the rebels really good, for yeah. example. Um, this is playing around with scum space, no question asked. Yeah. But leaving the, the battle and coming back later. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> um, or even Imperials, if like you have a commander that like calls in reinforcements. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. We also had Bosk revealed, which is a functional reprint of his old version. And also worth noting, has Initiative 4 as well. Oh. We have two YV666 pilots at the same initiative. Um, I guess they really wanted to keep Morala competitive. Which is cool. I'm not going to complain yeah, about that. Nothing wrong with that. While you perform a primary attack after your neutralized result step, you may spend one crit to add two hits. A functional reprint of the old Bosk. Which Wait, quick is question. Cool. What was Bosk's uh, PS? He was... PS7 originally and had an EPT. That's a downgrade then. Uh, 4 is 7. See, 7 is either 4 or 5. 4 is like the lower end of what the 7 spectrum was and some of them are managing to creep into P, uh, Initiative 5. Okay. I get the feeling that if a ship is PS7, mm-hmm. if it's an ace, Initiative 5. If it's not an ace, Initiative 4. Okay. I think that's what they're trying to go for, which is fair enough. Mm. I mean, Bosk is not meant to be flying last or anything. He's on a YV-666. Yeah. There's only so much good flying takes you. Also revealed was the Houndstooth title, and this is nice and simple. I love the way this has been done. It just says AZ-95 can dock with you. Yay. Queue up, simple. Doesn't have to explode um, and then come out of your ship. You can have a Z-95 fly into the YV-666 and fly out. We don't know how docking works just yet, but mm. that'll be revealed down the track. But the Nushta Pup, which does have a cost, mm. it's not going to be a free thing with the Houndstooth, it's the ship that comes out of the Houndstooth when it explodes, and that's the only way it can come into the battle. And again, it takes the pilot ability and initiative and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I see. Yes. So you can just have a, a Z95, but not the Natash Pop or Nashta Pop. That's right. That's right. So Ooh. any Z95 can dock any with... Any Z95. Could you could you dock like a, a, a named... Yes. Z95. Whoa! That's what this is implying. I don't know how much value it's going to have, like docking a ship and putting it over there. Might be cool, might not. I mean, the the YB-66 isn't exactly fast. It's Mm. not going to fly faster than Z95. Feedback array delivery. Yeah, (laughs) could be. Like, shenanigans. Shenanigans, shenanigans, shenanigans. Scum version. And what I'm keen to see, what I'm keen to see is now the Nashtar pup can be Bosk flying out, but you have the option of not using the Nashtar pup are we getting a Bosk and a Z95 card separate? 
I would like to see that. I don't think his ability is... I don't think his ability really lends well to a two-dice attack. Well, it might be a different ability. That's, That's what, true. what I'm thinking. It's like you can get Moralo flying the Hound's Tooth and then Boss can go and hang out in this ship That's by true. taking the Hound's Tooth card. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, definitely wouldn't have the same ability. Um, but uh, yeah, Boss can Z95. is a thing in canon because the Nash Tarpup exists. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Also revealed, we had the Y-Wing, which still exists on both the Scum and Rebel faction. Yeah. Pictured here as the Hide Gun Initiative 2. We don't know if we have the Syndicate Thug still, but whatever, Initiative 2 is fine. Yeah. Uh, has the same action bar, except we've added on a red barrel roll and a red reload. I like that the yeah, reload like is that. red on, on Y-Wings, because yeah. they're not about ordnance specifically. Mm. Uh, they have turrets and bombs and torpedoes. Oh, by the way, confirmed... Uh, why wings just have bombs on them now they no longer need bomb loader or anything like that oh excellent uh, a lot of cutting away of a lot of the chaff of the cards which is good also reload can get bombs back now excellent Th- that is uh, that's now a thing which was confirmed in an article that just came out this morning uh, also the stat line is the same again one shield from one hole blah 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 broken record happens every single time the dial is the same it can still take the astromech to improve the, the quality of its manoeuvres but it's only one and two speed so mm. you'd still be getting two hard blues which is still good so I'm not going to complain about that um, the dial wasn't problematic in first edition so I'm not a, I don't have any issues with this it's not a great dial no. but it doesn't need to be because it can it has, still turn around yeah bombs torps and turrets and all that kind of stuff mm. it's fine not a problem and the last ship we have here the Z95 pretty much untouched twos across all of its stats and we have a red barrel roll added to the wow, action it really bar. is completely untouched yeah pretty much love uh, it uh, which is good uh, that dial as well uh, we have a 4k as well that's good. The three state is now blue. Cool. Apart from that, we're gonna we're gonna roll over those like three straight as green all the time, aren't we? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Which I think is fair. Apart from that, no more details with Zen ninety five. No parts revealed yet. I'm keen to see what happens with Nadru Salak and Kato Lechos and yeah, all their. Nadru is great. Nadru is great. I'd, I'd love to see a relevant costing on Nadru and yeah, see if we can make that work. That we would be awesome. The same because he was just he was just so much fun. Absolutely. Last but not least, we have a few upgrade cards that are scum specific. Dead Man Switch, same as it ever was. Half you are destroyed. Each other ship at range zero to one suffers one damage. Oh mm. man, this has got to be cheap. Otherwise, it's going to be as bad as it always was. Yeah, I hope it's a zero point cost. Oh my god, it'd be great if it's a negative point cost. Uh, yeah, that'd be interesting because it, it is a scary thing to have. Like, it means you have to fly around it. The problem with Dead Man Switch is your opponent controls when your ship blows up. Exactly. Um, that's why a it's so hard. Point to- cost. Yeah, I'd, that's a good point. Um, I'd never thought of that. Cool, cool, that'd be fun. Uh, cloaking device goes on small or medium ships. Spend one charge to perform a cloak action. As mm. two charges. At the start of the planning phase, roll one attack die on a focus result, decloak or discard your cloak token. And this is good because it doesn't uh, just get rid of the cloaking device. The cloaking device no longer breaks. Yeah. Uh, it still only works twice. And you can still decloak accidentally, but you don't just lose the cloaking device. Mm. That made it basically unplayable in first edition. That was one of the biggest issues with it. I know a lot of people talked about, oh, you can use it with Talonbane. I've flown it with Talonbane. I've flown it it with Paylob. It's fun, but you're right. It does just pop. Fun. The key word being fun. (laughs) Yeah. But in terms of being consistent, I mean, consistency Mm. is about what good lists uh, do. So, yeah. Um, It'll depend on costing. If it's cheap enough, I think it might start to see play. Otherwise, I don't think it's going to be in top tier lists alright we have some of the unique characters in Bosk this is a gunner card after performing a primary attack that misses if you are not stressed you must receive a stress token to perform a bonus primary attack against the same target so he doesn't token stack anymore he now gives you an extra attack and this is what all of these gunner cards are doing extra attacks extra attacks Ooh. yeah and that's extra attacks not only if you miss it's just, not only just, if you miss, yeah. And just in this case. Exactly. And you can see how this is covering the same space as the old Gunner, but you have to get a stress token. Mm. And that says to me that Gunner's not going to get a reprint because yeah. Gunner was really good and really feel bad in some situations. And if they're only going to give the Gunner ability to scum, well, that's okay. Yeah. I think that's going to be fine. Um, I think like having the double tapping Falcon was a bit problematic. It led to the, like, the Fat Han build and all that kind of stuff. Double tapping fire sprays though. Still a thing. Still yes, going to be good. But has to get stress tokens. And I think that's a key thing. It, mm. Just just dial it back a little bit. Make sure you have to get stress. Um, and that's good. It really reflects what Bosk is doing. 
Um, he rages when he misses and goes, ah, oh, shoot, shoot him again. Anyway. Do it again. Pretty much, pretty much. We also had revealed Dengar. And this is kind of a functional reprint of R5-P8, where you get to damage your opponent if they shoot you. After you defend, if the attacker is in your firing arc, uh, which is a new stipulation, you may spend one charge. If you do, roll one attack die, unless the attacker chooses to remove one green token. Again, you have the option to remove green tokens to negate repeatable effects that hmm. are quite powerful. R5-P8 was always a really good card. Again, on a hit or crit, they suffer one damage. And I think this is good. This is a dialed back version of R5-P8. Dengar doesn't just give re-rolls anymore. That hmm. was too problematic. Too good. Um, Predator still exists in the game, but it only works in Bullseye Firing Arc. Rerolls is something you have to work for. Mm. And I think given how powerful Dengar used to be and how powerful this effect is and how I think it'll still be good, um, even yeah, though... This, this, will, yeah. this will be see some play, absolutely. Absolutely. It's still good. It's still a great effect, even if you have to jump through more hoops. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Ketsu Onyo, at the start of the end phase, you may choose one enemy ship at range 0-2 to two in your firing arc. If you do, that ship does not remove its tractor tokens. And this is a functional reprint of the old Ketsu Onyo. Helps you retain tractor tokens, which could be very relevant because it's easier to stack up more of them these days. Well, mm. yeah, I think they could be good. I think it'll depend how good tractoring is. In and second cost edition. Again. Oh, yeah, cost again. The old one costs one point. If it still costs two, I think they'll be fine. Yeah. All right, something spicy. Maul. Spicy Maul. Absolutely. He can still go on the Rebels if you have Ezra Bridger. Mm. After you suffer damage, you may gain one stress to recover a force. Sounds good. He adds a force and still recovers it every turn, which is good. Um, I like that. On non force using ships, having mm. that force token handy for every turn, I think it's going to be good. Yes. And you can equip dark side upgrades. So, oh, wait, do we know any dark side upgrades? Okay, what dark side upgrades are are force upgrades. These are talents that mm. go on to force users, and dark side is a stipulation for some of them. Mm. In, in that Luke can't take this because it's choking. So, it's something like that. Functionally like Legion. Yes, yes, exactly right. Um, so this could go on Ezra Bridger and allow him to take a dark side force upgrade, for example. Mm. I don't think this means you can just take the force dark side upgrades on any ship. I still think you have to have, have a force user to do this because otherwise it would give mm. you a force upgrade slot, which is a big deal. I think this just means if you put it on Ezra, he gets dark side abilities. I don't know. I... I the way I'm reading it, it just says you can equip dark side upgrades. Ah, but you have more on the ship. But I it. think dark side is going to be a stipulation oh, yeah. on force upgrade. Mm. It's not going to be a slot. Otherwise, oh, it would see. have an icon. Yeah, that's just my thinking moving forward. Mm. I think giving the force slot would be too powerful. That's yeah, that's where I'm at with that, and I. It makes the most sense power level wise. We we just want to avoid. So it's really just for Ezra, Ezra Bridger, unless. Unless you reason. have Ezra and another Force user on your squad that has a crew slot, which is... Uh, Unlikely. Kyle. <laughs> at this stage. Actually, we don't know if Kyle has Force. This that, is true. Um, because he could represent the Kyle before he became a Jedi, which was mm. most of his career with the Moldy Crow. Anyway, massive tangent. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Need more information. Let's move on to R5TK. Same as it ever was. I don't think I'm ever going to play it still. <laughs> you can perform attacks against friendly ships. Unless you wanted to get those uh, those suicide bombs. Yeah. I Unless think you really, really want that to need, blow up. You need a great reason to take this. <laughs> and, I and I don't think that exists in the game just yet. Uh, in case you guys are interested, I did a whole video on R5TK when he was revealed. I wasn't convinced back then. We basically went through all the different builds that exist in first edition that can exploit him. And, uh, look, some of those were fun and spicy, but I don't think any of them were competitive at all. And I don't think moving in second edition that's going to be the case. No. Interestingly really. enough, the original version said you can uh, get target locks on friendly ships. This one doesn't have to because any ship can target lock friendly ships now. That's just the thing. Oh. Because there are some things that combo with target locking, that kind of stuff. You can just target lock friendly ships. All right. Last but not least, the big slug daddy himself, Jabba the Hutt. Uh, pretty much a functional reprint. During the end phase, you may choose one friendly ship at range 0 to 2 and spend a charge. If you do, that ship recovers one charge on one of its equipped illicit upgrades. So now he has a range restriction, uh, touching to range 2. I like Jabba the Hutt a lot, but he just doesn't have any good relevant combos in there, first edition. There's going to have to be something. There's going to have to be some illicit upgrade that's like, damn, I wish I could do that more than once per round. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the most expensive one that spends now is Hotshot Blaster, and Hotshot Blaster... It wasn't great. great anyway. It should have been like two points. 
uh, if it was two points, I think it would have been okay. Mm. And then Jabba the Hutt could have got you all these extra turret shots, which is interesting on Z95s, I guess. But yeah. Is um, it cloaking device? Cloaking device, yes, yes, he can get your cloaking device oh, back. Oh no, my cloaking device is gone. I better give it back. Wow. Well, it, well, basically, it lets you spend the cloaking device more times now. Mm. Yeah, it already comes with two charges. <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of, yeah, uh, yeah, mm, yeah, nah, yeah, nah, probably, yeah, nah. In his defense, we don't know all the list upgrades yet. There could That's be something, true. and also platform-wise. I don't think there's going to be any ship in the game currently that's going to suddenly gain two crew slots. Yeah. The problem is on the platform he was already on, there, there's no shuttle on mm. the scum faction. Um, YB666. Yeah. The, the cheapest platform is 29 points, and that was a problem. Yeah. Uh, with Palp, conversely, his cheapest platform is 21 points or 20 points, mm. or whatever the, the Omicron group pilot is, which is much more relevant. Um, you can get a big support character in at below 30 points, Jabba the Hutt currently can't do that and it's all these stipulations that exist in first edition which is going to have to be met in second edition I don't think that's going to happen on release no. it's going to have some new ship and combo it's going to have to work with hmm. uh, which is a shame I like Jabba I, I wish he worked I, I wish he was in the ship in the game more but whatever yeah we'll see we'll see it'll happen eventually hmm. and that's all the scum stuff from the FFG unboxing Whew. that is yeah that's exciting that was some time <laughs> Thank you for joining me. You're Owen. very welcome. Uh, again, go listen to the Hell of a Pilot podcast. It's awesome. In the meantime, guys, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. And I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for listening.